Hey, Thomas from Field Tennis. I just want to give you a little bit of context for the video you're about to watch while I'm in this wonderful place in Slovenia. So this video today is part three of the series of videos on the topic of reading and disguising your surf. I will put the links to the previous videos in the description or you might see a card above. So the first video was on the topic of reading the surf. The second one was dispelling a common myth that we can hit all types of surfs from the same contact point. And today's video is made of two major parts. The first part is me demonstrating how to disguise your surf from the add and use side. And the second part is how you can fool your opponent knowing that they can read your surf. So let's dive in. So to show you how I can disguise my surf, I will try now to toss the ball in the same spot for a flat surf. And I'm going to go flat down the tee and then I'm going to go slice out wide so that I'm also changing the direction and my goal is that that's not obvious from the other side. So first we're recording from this side where it's more obvious and then we're going to also try from the point of view of returner who is much further and it's much harder for them to see small variations in the toss and then you will see that it is possible to hit quite well to hit flat surf and out wide quite well from the same toss. This one is quite good. So I've overlaid the two surfs that you just saw, one flat and one out wide. In this app I've overlaid one over another so you can see both at the same time. So we go to contact and you can see that at contact is minute difference, maybe just like a hundredth of a second timing difference. There is basically no real difference in terms of left and right. So basically impossible for opponents to read. And if we go a bit further, you can see that the ball flights are quite different, right? So eventually when the ball hits the court, one is here and the other one is here and obviously this would be impossible for opponent to tell what am I up to the contact point is the same the toss is the same it's just how we hit the ball whether we have a slightly angled racket or not and how we push into the ball that makes a different ball flight so that is our objective our objective is that we toss the ball the same so this toss is for a flat serve for me personally, I'm tossing for a flat serve and I'm able to hit a slice serve also from the same toss and this guy is my serve. So one little tip how you can make the slice serve from this contact point a bit easier is that you toss slightly more in front. So opponent from this angle will not be able to see this small variation in tossing because they would see only left right. And if you toss like just a few inches more in front and they're like 80 feet away, they will likely not see it. But for you, it will be easier to come at the ball a bit more at an angle for a slice. So I can hit flat quite well here at this contact point. So if I show from the side, so here I can hit quite well flat, but slice does not feel so comfortable. I would rather hit slice here. So here are both serves now overlaid. So this is contact point. For a flat serve, this is contact point for a slice serve. So uh, that's how you can see the difference that it's a bit more in front. Now, if I rewind back to the beginning, you can see that this is basically starting the same, right? It's the same serve, same toss uh, position. So the further I go back, the more the picture merges together. And then the difference will be, of course, as I am tossing the ball slightly more in front, then I'm pushing myself a little bit more in front for a slice serve. Then I am pushing myself in front for a flat serve. And that's why, you know, the images start to diverge. And this is what enables me to hit a slice serve uh, slightly more comfortably with a better slice on the ball, hit a better curve. And again, from the opponent's perspective, so they're watching from this side, 
they are not able to see this slight difference in the ball toss. But for me, or for you, once you are able to toss that accurately, it makes quite a difference to hit a much more effective slice serve. All right, so now I'm going to try and show you how I'm disguising my serve. I'm going to hit flat down the tee and slice out wide. And what I'm going to do in terms of the toss, I'm going to toss for the slice serve slightly more forward. So left, right, I'm going to try and toss in the same place as the flat serve. But in terms of forward, backward, I'm going to toss a little bit more inside the court to make it easier for me to hit a good slice. And we're going to see if that can be seen from that distance. So this is how the contact points look like from the other side. So again, I've aligned two serves, one flat, one slice. So if I keep going, you can see that they go in different directions. So again, the reading the surf from this image that you're seeing like this, um, based on my position is very, very difficult. There's very, very small variation in the ball placement. And that's what you want. Obviously, there will always be some variation. We're not robots. Sometimes there's a bit of a wind and so on. But um, it's not really obvious what the server or what am I up to right now. But uh, once the ball starts to fly, it's very obvious difference. So that is, again, your objective. I'm just showing you from different perspective how you can disguise your serve and how it's possible to serve a flat down the tee and a slice out wide from the same toss. So on the ad side, what you can try in disguise is to go flat, flat out wide and slice down the tee. So same types of serve, similar directions, like on the juice side, you're going tee flat and wide. So when you're serving a bit more left, you're going slice. So here the same, I want to show my opponent the same toss. And I want to go sometimes flat out wide and sometimes slice down the tee. And I want to disguise my serve. And here are the serves on the ad side. So again, you can see minute difference in the contact point. The balls are very, very close together. Uh, my body position is basically the same. So again, if I rewind a little bit, then it looks like this. So even from the ball trajectory, uh, not much to see. And this is how the serve looks like. If you can catch that while you're watching at real speed, it's, that's the image you have. You don't see really much more uh, difference in the contact point, more left, more right. But as you can see, then the balls fly very differently. And again, even the body movement after the contact is the same, almost the same. And so even like from the body movement, you cannot really read the direction and the type of the serve. And so that's how uh, we disguise the serve. Here's just another example on the ad side. So now that we know our opponent is reading our serves, can we use that to our advantage? Yes, we can. So what we need to do is we need to show our opponent a very obvious toss so that they read the serve. So let's say I'm going to show slice first. And you've seen one situation before already, so I will show slice. So if I toss a bit more to the right and it's obvious that I'm going to hit a slice out wide, then our opponent is anticipating that, reading that. And if we first, in the beginning of the set of the match, really do serve out wide, maybe four, five, six times, so we really demonstrate, okay, I'm tossing here and I'm slicing there, then they are assuming that we don't have the variation because they've not seen it yet. They are assuming, oh, this opponent is very easy to read. They're showing me what they're going to serve. They're tossing for slice. They're hitting out wide, which is obvious for a slice serve on the deuce side. And they will move a little bit early, not in the beginning, but after five, six, seven serves that you will do like that. They will move like that. And then you're saving an ace up your sleeve for the end of the set, for crucial points, 4-all, 30-40, 5-all, break point, set point, stuff like that, you're saving. And then this situation, and then you toss again, very obviously, for the slice serve, and then you go down the tee. And that's how you can fool your opponent, because they are now 
trained, they're trained, you've trained them, that they react and anticipate to the most obvious toss and serve that you're doing. And then you save your surprise for a really critical point. Now, obviously, what needs to happen is that you need to have a good skill of actually being so precise with these types of serves to vary the placement and that's all just practice. You need to feel, okay, I feel how to hit a slice serve. Then it's just practice, trial and error, basket of balls and keep trying and adjusting. Aim more left, aim more right and so on until you become more precise. So let's see the same situation from the ad side. So what is the typical topspin serve? Once you see the toss going a lit little bit more behind, you see the player leaning backwards, you know topspin serve is coming and most of them are coming out wide. So something like this. <sighs> okay, this one is kind of a typical one. So how do we fool our opponent, we show them this toss, we keep serving out wide, we get them used to this type of surf and then we save our ace up the sleeve for the critical point in the match. We toss the same and we go down the tee. So I will try to vary one wide one down the tee, same toss. See, perfect. So we've come to the end of the video. Hopefully it has answered all your questions on how we can disguise the serve, how can opponent read our serve, what can we really disguise and how we can actually fool the opponent because they can read the toss. And if there's something I haven't answered yet, just ask me in the comments below and I will do my best to answer as soon as I can. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.